people have often said to me, uh, I remember a Japanese uh, interview that I did over in uh, Harajuku once, uh, David, you never put uh, a label, uh, your, your, your brand in your clothes that you make. Uh, and I said, well, I just think it's rude. I, why would anybody want to have my name in their clothes? And also, I really hope that people can recognize suits that I've made from the cut and the quality and not go searching around for, for a label. Uh, but there's one exception to uh, this uh, not having visible labels in Savile Row. And if you talk about Savile Row, then you've got to talk about Henry Poole. And they're, I think, pretty much the only tailor in what must be the top five tailors that stick a dirty great big label right in, in the middle of the coat like that. But I think um, it's Henry Poole, so uh, he, he can set any rules he, he, he likes. Every tailor in the world owes a debt to Henry Poole for elevating them socially. The story goes that he was walking in Ratton Row or something, Hyde Park, and the king and a few of his buddies were walking along, and he said, oh, good morning, Mr. Poole. And the other sort of courtiers were, a few of dukes and, uh, and uh, lackeys, were astonished that the king had spoken to a tradesman. It was quite sort of not quite done. That particular greeting from the king uh, did wonders for tailors. It, it elevated the social status and tailors became front door tradesmen. Like, the only other front door tradesman was the, the, the wine uh, merchant would come to the front door but the guy with the spuds and the coal would go around the back and deal with the housekeeper. But suddenly tailors were really elevated socially and uh, Henry Poole was I, I think maybe the first tailor uh, to be in, in Savile Row. So Savile Row and the tradition of excellent tailoring was started by, by Henry Poole, uh, and they turn out some bloody marvellous kit. Uh, I, I bought some suits from a chap who at the age of 20 inherited a Clyde uh, shipyard, and uh, he had dozens of suits made at Henry Poole, and all had uh, printed silk linings, and the, the tailoring was absolutely superb. Yeah, um, if you draw up a league table uh, of tailors, I suppose Huntsman, obviously, H Henry Poole, they're like that. They're definitely top boys. Now, I want to chat about this jacket for a minute, but also, I want to talk about this coat hanger. Now, this is a mystery to me. It's a fabulous bit of kit. It's an aluminium moulding. A lot of uh, military uh, uniforms beyond coat hangers with this little high-rise neck thing like this. It's made in uh, three or four pieces. This is just a sort of bent steel thing and uh, it, it's bolted together. Now, I've been in this business an awful long time and I've never seen one of these before. I came across one a couple of years ago and the lady told me she had another two. They were made in Sheffield. And I've never seen them before, but it's obviously something that was in production. It's got a patent on it uh, and a Sheffield brand name. I was thinking of getting these things remade. It's just a beautiful bit of kit. Yeah, fabulous. Anyway, this um, fabulous <laughs> wool evening coat. It's got a little bit of damage here, and I'm not sure how I'm going to go about repairing this. Uh, a darn is going to look... A little bit obvious. I don't really want to redo the whole lapel like that, so uh, I think it might just have to be getting some actual silk thread and try and just sort of flatten that down with some, some clever stitching. Yeah, we'll see. It's an ongoing project. Uh, this was made in, let's see, uh, do, 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 do. Oh, 1956, so it's got, this has got a bit of age to it, yeah. Yeah, a beautiful bit of kit, not being worn very much at all, uh, but oddly, it's got this little bit of wear on the neck, but I think it might have come from some damage rather than actual wear, because nothing's on, on this side, yeah. Absolutely beautiful tailoring.